and chill. Matt G, the ghost lady, and Len Moleko. Okay. Henda, Barry Mini. Welcome to the ladies and gentlemen. It's another episode of Ghost Lady and Chill. And today I'm going to be with you, the talented, the fearless, unapologetic, sincere, <laughs> the smart. Whatever adjectives you've got for her. For strong women, ladies and gentlemen, much love and love. Welcome to the show. Yeah, 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 yeah. But I think, Thank uh, you. Much love, Nicole. It's not better. <laughs> Let me guess. Your surname is Nicole. Wow. Wow. Hey, would you like that? <laughs> Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> so, so a lot of my subscribers they always have me because um, I just can't help it, but I'm always flirting with my female guests. Mm. So today I'm going to try and be professional. Okay. Like well, you're off to a very bad start. <laughs> <laughs> the thing about dressing, it's all natural, you know what I mean? Uh, I love women with like natural hair. I wow. don't have a problem with girls with weaves, but I prefer, you know, like... Um, I know what you mean. I, I think because I've... I mostly had natural hair in in my adult life, so a lot of people think I'm like you know um, the ambassador for natural hair. And I personally believe that women can do whatever they want to do with their hair. You know, as long as you look good, you feel good. That's all that matters. Every woman I meet is like, "Yo, Mas Chava is my idol. When you're getting on the show, I got to She inspires me." <laughs> Oh my gosh, Chava. Chava's girlfriend. Wow, right who's girlfriend? Oh, <laughs> oh, you got files. <laughs> Yo, wow. Because that's when I was first introduced to you when I was watching backstage in the cheapest girlfriend. Oh my god, I don't think anyone remembers that. No, I do. I used to love backstage. How was my acting? Well, it was dope. Uh, but I thought you. Could I'm asking because for longer. Why? Because you were there for like six months, I think. I couldn't. I couldn't stomach any more of it. I couldn't. I just couldn't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 But it was fun while it lasted, you know? Yeah. I just couldn't handle the, you know, the unprofessionalism behind the scenes and going from working on generations with professionals mm. who were veterans to like working with these youngins who show up unprepared. They don't know their Super scripts. Stars. I didn't enjoy the process of creating the show. Yeah. So I, I love to enjoy what I'm doing. But we'll, we'll get to that in just a bit. Anyway, let me not take over. <laughs> so, what do you think so many women look up to you? Wow. Mm. Sure. This is so good. I thought we were easing into this conversation. Ah, no, we started. We started with the shits. No. Started straight into it. I, I think it's because of the fact that I am unapologetic. I think it's because of the fact that I'm not afraid to express myself and to be myself. Yeah. Especially coming from a society where we've been taught the complete opposite that you have to fit into a certain role that you have to behave a certain way that you need to watch your tongue mind your language you know so i definitely think that there are a lot of people who are living in their own shells that have been created by their personal points of reference and and so yeah, I mean at least that's what I hear from the feedback that I get from the women. And when I watch all your interviews, they're always so serious, man. Like, do you even for sure do you twerk? <laughs> oh, you've never seen me twerk? Oh, don't get me started. Wow, oh no, it's bad enough we've got a cushion that looks like this here. <laughs> don't get me started with the Vosho and the twerking. Okay, yeah. I remember twerking when I was um, at Metro FM. A song came on. I think it was uh, it was the yoga song. Okay. Oh, did I get into my feels? Yeah, yeah. I think that was probably the highest rated video I've ever posted in wow. my life. Just yeah. twerking. And some people were disgusted because they're like, how dare you? We, you were an example to our <laughs> children. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. I'm like, guys, I'm a grown woman. Hey, if I want to yeah. twerk, I will twerk. Yeah. Thank so there you. is a fun side of you. Of course. Okay. I'm glad. <laughs> I'm glad. In fact, I think there's more fun mm. and and um because I've got so many layers, right? So people know a few layers. Mm. They know a few sides of me. Yeah. And and I think maybe even twenty percent. There's an eighty percent out there that that very few people are privy to and mm. and and it's okay and I love that. Is that by choice or it's just based on like, you know, because people Especially celebrities, when they start in the game, they like want to be perceived in one way and do things so that they come out looking like that. That's and an interesting question. Maybe a bit of both, because when I started out as an actress, 
uh, I was doing that because I needed the money. Mm. And But the camera loved me. And yeah. I, I seemed to know what I was doing. So I ran with it. But I knew that that's not where I was called. Yeah. And uh, I started aligning myself with the things that I was truly meant to do. But now, to go from being an actress to being a newsreader and to be in current affairs, you've got to really make sure people have forgotten that part of your life, yeah. especially at the time at which I was doing it. Mm. Um, I couldn't do both. So I chose to stick with this direction and build up my brand. And I consciously decided not to dilute my brand by, by trying to be a singer yeah. or, or trying to be an actress. Or, and there's nothing wrong with other people doing it. But I just believe you can't, be, you, you can't be a jack of all trades if you're not even good at one thing. Exactly. So I vowed to myself, I'm going to get this one thing right. Mm. And as soon as I've done that, I can explore. So it's partly because of that. Yeah, but your rhythm is crazy, dude. <laughs> what <laughs> haven't you done? <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, says. Okay, so, because uh, 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 there's so much, I'll just scream through it and then you'll tell me what I forgot. You started in Generations, you go to backstage, uh, you start working at Epping Brew as a production, what, what, behind the scenes. And then you start the big debate, I think. Yeah. And no. Whoa. Big debate was only no, much, yeah, much, much later. later. Yeah. Yeah. And then. Just okay. So 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 generations backstage, you were one hundred percent correct. Um, and then after that was a wrestling show. Wrestling. I was You're kidding. I was. I was. <laughs> You see this little little dress that I got on here? This is nothing yeah. compared to the little skirts I used to wear on, yeah. on TV. Yeah. And without stockings, yeah. yeah? So, but at least I had lines, you mm. know? I was that girl that came into the, the, the ring uh, and said some words and links to camera and link to the next what five. Is this? is this on WWE or what is it? It was WWE. Is it WW? What was ETV? Was it F or E? F. It was F. F, F yeah? yes, WWF. Yes. Oh. It was our version of wrestling. Oh. So I did that. And then. Uh, Damn, you're taking it way back. <laughs> Yo, dude, you have no idea. And I can't remember whether Reliable Slam Down was before that or after that. Yeah. But I just remember that Reliable Slam Down was the first show of its kind that I ever did that was in the direction of mm. where I was going, mm. where I got to interview people. Yeah. As a matter of fact, on my first day, my first interview was Pro Kid. Oh, wow. In my career. Wow. My first interview was Pro Kid. Look at so, you. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then Reliable Slam Down. I played on SABC One at midnight. And then there was... Uh, hey, did you not tell me? At some point, there was... Okay, there was Excel Let's Talk with Master Chaba, then Likalake on ETV. And then SABC pulled me back with a show called One Day Leader. Okay, no, no, it was the other way around. One Day Leader came first, and then ETV pulled me after the second season of, of One Day Leader to come to Excel Let's Talk. Oh and goodness. these were all very difficult decisions, and by the way. with radio. No, oh, goodness. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> now we'll be all day. Anyway, right? look, listen. Yeah. Uh, Google, Google, Google me, baby. <laughs> no, I cannot go through this entire process. So I've got a theory about you, right? Uh -huh. And I think whether you're doing radio, whether you're doing TV or um, production, you always excel, right? And I think it's because you. of your childhood, because I feel like when you were growing up, you were always an outsider, right? So like basically, this is just a theory. You can correct me if I'm wrong. No, I'm listening. Yeah. I'm impressed. So when you, were, when, yeah. you, when you grew up in Zambia, right? Okay, cool. You're an outsider there. You come here, you're in SA now, uh, you know, you got to learn Sutu, you're an outsider. All right, cool. You go to America, now you're not English enough, you know, you don't know how to speak English. So you're an outsider there. Uh, you go to generations, you you know, experiencing, you meeting all these people that are well experienced, have been doing this for years, kind of an outsider there, and then you go to backstage, now there are these celebrities <laughs> and superstars, and you're not like that. Worse. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so you're an outsider, okay, you go to Metro, you go into a music station, you come from a talk background. I was an outsider. You're an outsider. And that's why I feel like in everything that you do, you excel it because you're used to being an outsider. Oh, my God. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> it's just an observation I made. Wow. That is profound. Yeah. I've never heard anyone put it like that before. Yeah. I've been an outsider my whole life. Yeah. In every single thing that I've ever done, in every space that I've ever occupied, whether it's television, radio, I've always been an outsider. Yeah. School. Yeah. Yeah. Countries. Yeah. And at one point, I was... Um, I was too African for the Americans, and at some point I was too American for the, the Africans. Africans. Wow. <laughs> yeah. I feel like, wow. Yeah. Sure. But I, I should, I should be paying you. I feel like I'm sitting on like a, you know, with my, uh, what do they call them? What's the colloquial term for like a psychologist? 
Oh, I don't know. My shrink. Your I feel shrink. like I'm sitting <laughs> with my shrink. Jeez, yeah. that's the last thing you should be calling me. <laughs> <laughs> but, but I mean, that's uh-huh. why I think like you never are comfortable when you're in a comfort zone. You always need a challenge. Oh, wow. You know? I think you're right. Yeah. I've never See, thought this about that. you should that. be Mrs. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he got me figured out. <laughs> But Bring in the cows. <laughs> but when, you, when you're doing radio, TV, where do you feel most at home? Yo. Yeah. Yo. Yo. That's a very difficult question. Mm. It's a difficult question because I didn't choose radio. I didn't choose yeah. TV. I didn't choose either of these things. They found me. Mm. And I discovered that I had something to offer mm. while I was in it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, yo. Because you, you wear a lot of hats, you know? You know, television is, I, I, I would say, you know, is my wife and radio is, 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 is my side chick. But, <laughs> but here's the interesting thing, though, is that I win awards for radio. Yo, wow. I win awards for radio. Yeah. Both shows that I've been on, uh, I won an award, f- the first award for Power FM, yeah. for Power Life, best nighttime show. I mean, imagine it was my first year in radio. I didn't know what the hell I was doing. Yeah. I created a template as I went and with Metro scooped the drive's first ever award. Mm. So is radio my side chick? Maybe not. <laughs> I guess only time will tell. You know? I don't know the answer to the question. I don't want to lie to you. Like, I don't even know. So you started the game in about uh, 2003, right? 2003. It's not 2019. How do you think it's changed? I think that people are finally going back to the basics. And by the basics, mm. I mean that we're finally um, leaning into authenticity yeah 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 yeah. because the like look at you i mean look at us right now you know we're sitting in your space in your home we're 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 conducting a show that many people who are on commercial platforms fail to do you know the quality of this is so much more respect respectable than many platforms that i've been on authentic more authentic and and for me that means a lot so i feel like the game is getting more authentic Mm. and with that it means because we went through a little period it was like a little 10-year period Mm. where everyone thought it was about social media numbers Mm. Mm. everyone was a jungle everyone thought that that's what sells products that's what attracts rams and ars and the reason why I'm asking you that, because when you started, I remember you were telling a story mm. and you were like, um, at backstage, these superstars that you're talking about would want to go to an event uh, because of that whole, if you're not seeing, uh, what is it? Uh, out of, out of, out of mind, sight, out of, out of yes. mind. Exactly. Yeah. And you'd be like, no, but what value does it bring in my life? You know, why should I go there? And look at you now, and where are those people? Where are those people? None of them are here, by the way. Who, who are They're all about? gone. Who I'm not. I'm not. Uh-huh. Cheaper. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. No, it was not cheaper. To put it on the record, it was not cheaper. It was not Loiso Mangena, okay? KB. <laughs> no. no, no, I'll tell you off camera. But <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't even know where they are. You and I'm, I'm still here. Yeah. I didn't need to be on red carpets and to be. In fact, I think that. The opposite preserved my brand. Yeah. I wasn't in the Sunday papers because I was being seen at every single social. But I make it into the newspaper, including the Sunday papers, because of the work that I do. Yeah, let the and work speak for itself. That's the difference. And that's, that's my thing with like uh, a lot of uh, uh, ladies or females in the industry. They invest so, much, invest so much time in their looks, but if they invested in themselves, you know, they'd be sort of like... The, l- the the road is that much longer and longevity is there for the taking. Yeah, I'm sorry. I was distracted. Lola was busy answering my phone. <laughs> I'm sorry. Oh, yeah, yeah, Could you sure. repeat the question? Yeah, yeah. So yeah. I'm just saying like that's what I'm well, that's what I see with like ladies now. <laughs> they invest so much time in their looks mm-hmm. for getting to invest in themselves. Of course. You know? And and it's not just the looks that will get you there. Exactly. For the longest time though, let's be real, it was. Yeah. For the longest time, the most successful women mm. in the game were women who were good looking mm. who had who had their the, shit together like yeah. they were trendy they understood fashion for the longest time i wasn't that girl for real i felt like i had so much to offer and i felt like i had so much talent but i wasn't even reaching the levels you that these girls were no not at all yeah. um i wasn't clearly interacting with the right people in the right ways yeah. i Maybe w- you should open <laughs> your legs <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to be as subtle as possible. 
<laughs> um, you know, and, and, and I was not a fashionista at, at, at any point in my career. Mm. And I took those things for granted. Mm. I really did. And it may have been slightly arrogant of me to think that my gift could override that. My gift was so much bigger than just what I look like. It's not like that. Mm. So if you want to make it in, an, in a visual industry, you need to have all your shit together, all your mm. ducks in a row, you know, left, right, and center. You need to sound good. You need to at least have some substance. Mm. Although I realize you don't need it in this industry, but for God's sake, yeah. let's breed a new generation of broadcasters. Because he's so smart, I'm like, why the fuck would you want to be in this industry? <laughs> <laughs> you could be a, 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 a lawyer. Be a lawyer you know I mean? <laughs> By the way, if I weren't in uh, broadcasting, I'd be a lawyer. Yeah. So I grew up reading um, John Grisham's an books. An author. I would have probably been a legal author. Mm. I grew up reading John Grisham, like, you know, The Pelican Brief. Every book that you can imagine that yeah. John Grisham has ever released. I've read. I still love um, legal dramas. Right now I'm watching a show called uh, Proven Innocent okay. that's on catch up uh, as well at the moment. And what happened to your um, books that you wrote when you were still young? I gave them away. I mm. gave them away, but I created a little library. Oh, okay. So I came back from the States with a. Whoa, whoa, whoa. You mean the books that I, I wrote? Or yeah, the when, books? You were, when you're young. When you're still young. <sighs> you need to ask my mom. Oh. <laughs> I thought you were talking about the books that I used to read in the States. Nah, nah, nah. I came with them, created yeah. a little library in my grandmother's back room, and always had kids from the neighborhood in the house. And uh, eventually we, we donated the books to a school. And top three books a young female should be reading right now. Top three books a young female should be reading right now would have to be... Uh, I, I don't know the author, but there's a book that recently changed my way of thinking. Kama Sutra. In <laughs> <laughs> nah, nah. I should write a book <laughs> that overrides Kama Sutra. <laughs> uh, no. <laughs> yeah. But it would have to be Good Girls Don't Get the Corner Office. Okay, I don't know that one. It's um it's a book that every every young woman must read because yeah. it it changed my perception around how to conduct myself in a professional space. Ah. We come in as the ladies we were raised to, to be. be. Yes. And that and doesn't get game. you ahead. Mm. That doesn't get you ahead, you know? Mm. We take on too much. We become so flustered. Have you noticed that women who are really good at what they do tend to be the ones that are always busier than everyone else. Yeah. We take on more than everyone else. And then sometimes we look flustered and guess what? When an opportunity comes along, You're it not will appreciated. miss you. Yes. It will miss you mm. because they'll say, ah, Mas Chaba, she looks so busy and so preoccupied all the time mm. that nah, we can't give her this promotion. She already has enough on her hands. Yeah. You know? And so when that person is not there, just that one day, everything crumbles. Exactly. But now we don't even take the time. When you look at the boys, they take the time to talk some useless shit with the bosses. <laughs> they can stand around and True. just talk about, you know, the game that happened. And when now you're too busy because mm. you're building the boss's company, mm. but guess what? Who's going to get the promotion tomorrow? Hmm. It's going to be that guy that made the time to have the small talk with the yeah. boss. Yeah, about Champions League. 100%. Mm. So it, it teaches you a lot of life skills in business. So that's book number one. I would definitely have to say book number two is a book that changed my life. Uh, ten years ago, I've read it like five times. It's wow. a book by Eckhart Tolle. It's called A New Earth. A New Earth. Now, this book is just about being human. Okay. It is just about finding your place in that's, the and world. And that's what it's all about at the end of the day. 100%. And it's about being able to understand the definition of ego versus the definition mm. of who you are. Mm. So we identify with so many things that are not who we are. Listen to too much noise. You know what I'm saying? And, and whether it's family relationships, whether it's your relationship with the world, your, your relationship with yourself, this book will help you become stronger in, in all those relationships and in how you interact, even a simple situation like being at the airport and your flight is held up. Most people would be going crazy, looking at their watches, being annoyed. By the time you get to where you're going, your, your trip is over. It's yeah, spoiled. Energy, yeah. When you read this book, you, f you find your center regardless of the circumstances that are happening around you. Hmm. How do you think I was able to deal with black Twitter last year? Yeah. It's the lessons that I've learned through time and through reading some of these books. And if you don't know yourself, you could lose yourself. Of that, course. In that jungle, in of that course, mess, in completely. Noise, yeah. And that's the very reason why uh, I'm neither... Um, 
swayed by compliments nor phased by criticism. Hey, that's hey. the reason why, because I know who I am. Hey, yeah. Eddie Murphy once said that. Listen, if you're gonna take uh, all the good people say about you, you gotta be able to take the bad. Exactly. You know, you exactly. can't choose. Who do you think you are? <laughs> <laughs> I had to remind myself last year, like, who do you think you are? You think everyone is gonna have positive things to say it's about it's you nah, all the nah, time? Nah, dude, no, nah. it doesn't work. Even like Jesus that. had haters, no, man. Please. And who am I? That <laughs> <laughs> and then the last book <laughs> okay so the third book ish this is a tough one because i mean i've read so many books but i would have to single out mm, my goodness okay all right all right all right all right all right all right uh i would definitely have to single out a classic an international bestseller rich dad poor dad oh that's good yeah 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 yeah, yeah. yeah. see the way that robert puts these points across for me is important because you know they we are the village. Mm. Women are the village. So as it is, we carry the babies. We carry the households. Um, and especially when you look at the traditional and, and the natural order of things, men may be the heads of the household. Mm. And quite frankly, I really don't... You can go argue with your ancestors if you don't believe that men are the heads of the household. It's fine. It's okay to disagree. Yeah. This is where me and feminists get into tussles because Eesh. they're like, you're supposed to be a feminist. You can't say things yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I believe that be, there's a natural yeah. order. We can't have two bulls in one crown. Ah, but that work. also does not mean that I don't have a leadership role to play in that relationship. Mm. Women are the greatest leaders of any relationship. Kingmakers. We are the, we drive the household. Yeah. You know what I mean? But we still need to honor the man and give the man the respect as the man should Amen. respect the woman. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Please yeah. repeat that. Amen. Ba, 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 ba. <laughs> <laughs> Baby, I hope you're watching. <laughs> A survey has actually proven that there, there is no relationship, most relationships where the, the partners are completely equal in everything um, don't survive. Yeah, That's not a natural order of things. But also at the same time, you have to trust in the man's leadership. Mm. So you can't marry or be in a relationship with someone you don't respect, yeah. someone you don't look up to. I need to be led by you and I need to trust your leadership. Um, so that third book would definitely have to be... Uh, be, the reason why it is Robert's book is because, hey, did I get sidetracked? <laughs> is because if we don't learn how, if we don't have, if we don't develop a healthier relationship with money, we won't learn how to teach our kids about mm. money. It changed how I speak to my children. Yeah. yeah. It yeah. changed how I interact with money. And um, it created a new reality for me that I could then not impose my fears and impose my limitations mm. on my children. Mm. So I changed my mindset. And I'm hoping to God that I've helped them to develop a better mindset than the one I was raised with. Yeah. Most of our parents raised us in fear. Yeah, yeah They were afraid. Yeah, they yeah. had very little. So money was, you know, money was always tight. And even if it is tight, but you've got to imagine the abundance that exists in the world that God has for you. You've ever, have you ever been broke? Uh, yeah. You can't. <laughs> what do you mean? For 70 jobs, most jobs. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> well, you know, and, 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 and broke, you never stop being broke in mm. the sense that, um, the definition of broke just changes mm. as you progress in life. Yeah. So there was a time when broke meant I don't have electricity. Mm. I don't have food. food yeah. I don't have money for transport to get to work. Before or after the kids? That was definitely before the kids. Oh, okay. You know, I had my life figured out with the first. Pl I pl the first one was planned. Hey, hey man. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm proud of this because I wasn't even planned. So, <laughs> so the second one wasn't planned, but I mean, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's still a These gift from God. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know... Um, it was before. It was way before the kids. I hadn't mm. even met the the father of my my first child. Trying to figure yourself out. Yeah, I had an apartment in Windsor East. I was doing really well for mm. a kid my age. Mm. You know, I was in my early twenties. Were I was you splurging? Or were we like saving? I've never been a splurger. Oh, okay. In fact, I've never owned more than eight pairs or ten pairs of shoes ever. Same, hey. Even now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, and I feel like no man. And I'm cool. I'm cool okay with it. Yeah, it's like a... I just need to make sure that I, I, I remember to spoil myself. Yeah. But now getting back to the point, my broke at the time would be having my lights switched off, being threatened if I don't pay rent. That was my broke then. But my broke now is is not the same level of broke. Not having an Uber black driver. <laughs> <laughs> 
you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. You know, it's it's uh, but it's, it's still a, broke. It's a, it, it, yeah. It's relative. You yeah, know? it's relative, and that's just your reality. Yeah, I'm a freelancer, so you know, money definitely goes up and it goes down. It goes up and it goes down, but never beyond a certain point because I'm also a saver. Yeah. Being broke is childish. It Jay Z told us a long time ago. So hey, I it felt is, that one. Hey, you're it is, home, it is what it is. <laughs> I mean, I, I can't be 35 and be broke. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, cool. Uh, let's talk about spri- your spri- sp- journey. Okay, your spiritual journey. <laughs> <laughs> I'm starting to question myself. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, my spiritual journey is is uh, is very dynamic. Okay. I'm not sure which part you want me to address. Where did it start from? Where did you realize that, okay, cool, this is something that I need to explore? Okay, where it started and and, and where I decided to explore it, I would say it started when I was in, or even before I was in my mom's belly. Oh, okay. Because who you become as a, oh, mm, yes, okay. (laughs) And uh, who you are, who you become your 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 life is almost destined, I yeah. believe. You know, before you are even born, you are chosen. Yeah. Especially if you have the kind of path to walk that I've had. So I definitely believe that it's always been in me. I became aware of it halfway into Some my journey. You Thank yeah. you very much. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm. So I certainly became more conscious of who I am spiritually halfway into my life yeah. when I became an adult purely based on the levels of satisfaction that I would get in some spaces and not in others. I listen to my heart. So if I'm not happy in a certain environment because I'm not giving of myself in the way that I should, then move. Wow. That's then brave. Move. Eh? Yeah. That's brave, I've had to be courageous in my life to, um, to, to be able to fulfill my spiritual obligations. Um, I've had to pray. I've had to, really uh mature as a spiritual being and my spiritual journey is ongoing yeah <clears throat> excuse me what's your take on I so, I so feel, I, 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 yeah i'm I'm still a baby yeah the way that i see it spiritually and your ancestors what kind of relationship you got with your very tight mm. very tight very strong like mm. jimmy smith like these are all the men and women who carry me yeah. through my life. There's some that I've not even mentioned. And and really, I truly believe that whether you know it or you don't know it, whether you know them by name or not, we all have angels mm. that are guiding us, that are protecting us, that are fighting our spiritual wars that we don't even know exist. Not even cognizant of. You don't even know today. Mm. Your life was saved. You don't even know how. Wow. Whether it was Jesus, whether it was your grandmother, your grandfather, we're all, God is always assigning angels to guide us along the way. And religion? What's your take on religion? My take on religion is that the world needs religion. You see where we are. We see, you see who we are. Mm. Um, it's too late for us to try and, uh, and discount religion because it is so ingrained into our lives, into who we are. Yeah. So we are no longer the people we used to be without religion. We used to have solid morals. We had principles. We had systems. We had ways of doing things that were very different to how we do things now. But now, we, I do appreciate Christianity. I do appreciate um, whether it's Buddhism, whether, mm. you know, because I feel like we need something that regulates us as human beings and takes us back to the center. But don't you think it divides us in the same time as well? I've got very strong views about religion. I'm not religious. I'm mm. not. Um, I'm not Christian. I'm not. I'm not. I don't belong to any denomination. Mm. However, and and this this is something that people have to hear me very carefully on, because I'm acknowledging the goodness, mm. the good aspects of religion. It doesn't mean that <coughs> I believe in religion. Mm. I don't necessarily believe in religion, but I do believe that there's some values mm, that people are taught through yeah, religion. Yeah. There are things that I learned from various denominations yeah. besides Christianity. Uh, I don't agree with how religion was used to oppress our people, but that if we had to get into that conversation, yeah, we, we would have a three day <laughs> conversation. So what I truly believe is that we need to find ourselves back to our yeah. natural state of being. Yeah. Um, there is no religion that can overwrite who we are as a people, as Africans. And for as long as we are using religion to run away from who we are, how mm. I got a. So don't be religious because 
you're trying to run away from being African. Mm. If it makes sense to you, then go ahead, go yeah, be a Christian. Whatever, yeah, whatever pleases you. Yeah. yeah. But remember, at the end of the day, who you are will never change. So I um, got a question from a subscriber. She says, ask her how she deals with conflict, especially when somebody wronged her because uh, she's been giving us powerful tweets lately on Twitter relating to conflict. That's at K6M2. Conflict. Yeah. Yo, um, I've learned a lot about conflict and conflict resolution um, over the last, especially over the last year. Wow. And more especially conflict resolution within my own family. Because mm. there's no structure or relationship that matters more than a familial one. Yeah. Now, everyone always assumes just because I'm in the type of shows that heal families and heal the nation, that I come from a family that is healed, that has got... All of their ducks in a row. Mm. There could not possibly be any problems in my family. Nothing could be further from the truth. Wow. I come from um, a family that's had to deal with great challenges, that has had many dysfunctions within the family, and we've always just tried to make it work, you know? And some of those uh, conflicts come out in your show, The Big Secret, you know? 100%. Mm. I can relate, believe it or not, to mm. a lot of the conflicts in The Big Secret. Mm. Um, I understand fully because I come from a very challenging family background. Now, what I've learned about conflict resolution is that we have to absolutely, first and foremost, nurture our own peace of mind. We have to invest everything we possibly can into our own mental health mm. so that we're able to make rational decisions. If you are wrong, you need to be able to go back to where you messed up and say, I was wrong and I would like to fix this. Mm. However, with that said, if someone has wronged you, you must forgive them for yourself. Mm, for your sanity. For you. Mm. But forgiveness also doesn't mean allowing people back into your life yeah. to come and destroy your life yeah. again and again and again. So I urge anyone who comes from a broken family, dysfunctional family, to take responsibility, take ownership of your life, take ownership of your emotions. Because mm. you can't change your family members. Yeah. But you can change how you view life and how you interact with your family. Because what I've noticed is uh, the strongest people, like men or women, um, are actually the most vulnerable. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, so yeah. who do you cry to at night? Yeah. I know it's not me. <laughs> <laughs> I have a feeling you wish it was you. <laughs> I mean, I could be wrong. <laughs> I, I have a very... I'm very self-motivated, but even someone like me... Yeah, you need someone. You need someone. Mm. My greatest strength is also my greatest weakness. Mm. I don't have friends. Hey. I don't have friends. Mm. I've learned in life it's okay to be by myself. Yeah, it is. Especially in our industry. You know, the fake love is right. One hand, oh, my God. <laughs> love. Oh, my God. Ouch, yeah. <laughs> so there is someone that I talk to mm. every night. Yeah. So when Black Twitter is giving you shit, <laughs> you just talk to that person and it's well, all good first and foremost the person i talked to was god okay first and foremost yeah but there's definitely someone special that um has always been in my corner right. um yeah all right cool i got another everyone one. needs a good friend everybody does yeah yeah Ed Fano says, um, ask her why she left Power FM and moved to Metro FM. I feel like the show on Power FM was more aligned to a spiritual journey. Hey, spirituality didn't clap me this oh, time. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> well done. Look at you. <laughs> and she was able to talk about burning issues in society, whereas Metro FM was all about playing music. And in my humble opinion, I think she's more than that. She must come back to talk radio. We miss her and we love her so much. I'm not lost to talk radio. Mm. So I haven't left talk radio. I've just left the particular radio station where I was, which is Metro FM. Yeah. And when the time is right and when the platform is right, why I'll did be you on leave? radio. Why did you leave Power Valley? Yo. There was no more power there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, in a nutshell. Uh, I left Power because it no longer resonated with with my calling. So it was your decision. You were like, guys, kish up. I resigned with immediate effect. You resigned. And anyone that understands a position that someone has to be put in to resign with immediate effect must know and must think deeper about 
you know the circumstances you don't resign with immediate effect when things are rosy mm. um, I didn't leave didn't power f- I didn't leave power for metro that's oh, that's the only oh, thing that okay. people get um, miss yeah I did, and I, I could totally understand why they would have thought that because the timing but I can just tell you that timing was just oh god eh? but yeah. you know, yeah. so you know, um, you, you, you know that saying um, when you're busy making plans God laughs at you <laughs> you are like the living example of that. right you know what I'm right? saying right <laughs> but I, I could tell you now I mean had I been allowed to continue with the journey that I began at power and had I'd been given the space to do so, um, and had I'd had, you know, the support that, uh, that I needed, um, instead of having to fight mm. all the time and explain why our people need this type of content, especially Spirit Wednesdays, mm. um, I'd still be a power. Yeah. I'd still be a power. And people don't know the battles that happen behind the, yeah. when the mic is off. I would have retired at power. Yeah. Yeah. Well, all right. Speaking about radio, people are going to kill me for not asking you this. I honestly don't want to ask you this. Because I think it's, you've spoken about this so many times. Uh, but what's your take on the whole babes thing situation? I have no comment. Till this day. <laughs> <laughs> Which thing? Which part? Uh, okay, firstly, the interview. I have no comment. Mm. I have zero comment. All right, and then the aftermath of the interview. I have absolutely no comment. Mm hmm. I think I've said everything that's needed to be said about, um, I didn't say anything at all, actually, for the longest time. I think the only time that I spoke out about it was when I finally felt like I needed to put this to rest. And I've put it to rest. And uh, people can go out and find uh, the Pearl 2C interview. Mm. That was officially the last, the first and the last time that I will speak about babes. Are you still in contact with her? I choose not to be. Mm. Um... I don't want to uh, get sucked into that cesspool of dysfunction. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I choose not to be. I've got babies to focus on now, and there are other women who have who, you ever been in an my, my abusive assistance. relationship? I've been in abusive You're relationships. Kidding. Yeah, like that's mentally, what, that's, physically. I think that's what people don't understand is they probably think that uh, this is coming from a place of. Uh, I think they get it now after mm. seeing the, the the interview on behind the story. I think they finally got it. Um, even then I didn't know, I was just putting my heart on the floor and just being open. I didn't know which way it would go. You never do. How did you leave that relationship? Did you also go back or like? I didn't go back. Mm. I didn't go back. Um, I left. Mm. I left. I laid a charge. I got a restraining order. He was arrested. Wow. And, uh, I can't say it was easy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I was crazy about this guy. Yeah. Crazy about him. So it's never easy, and I understand that. Yeah. Every day for years, I wanted to pick up the phone. Every single day, I dreamt about him. I missed him. You don't stop loving someone just because they beat you. Mm. But you have to be strong, especially if you have children. Yeah, You cannot tolerate abuse. Because um, if you live in an abusive or in a violent environment, you're one step away from from leaving there in a box. Yeah. Not everyone who dies in a relationship was um was targeted to be killed. Not not I mean if you if you go to the prisons and you ask I interact a lot with men who have done such. I spend a lot of time in prison. You ask them what happened. They didn't wake up in the morning always planning to kill this person. Mm. In many cases it's just a, f- a fight that went too far and as usual, you know, you beat the person and then guess what? You just beat them a bit too much and then you um, you kill them. Yeah. So we always sit there as women and think, ah, you'd never do that. You'd never, you'd never mm. kill me. And then he kills you. And wow. then what? And then how did it affect your relationship with Mo, uh, that incident? Because uh... I know I've worked <laughs> with Mo and he can be a dick. <laughs> I'll be the first to say. <laughs> <laughs> that incident taught me to to look after myself mm. just to take care of me you know to look after number one and um and stop stop caring so much mm. 
about other people but before. But if you can't help you it, you can't yourself. help it. Must I can't job. help it. I can't help it. Yeah. Yeah. I can't, and it's why I'm, I'm trying I'm to never, stop drinking. And I'm I can't. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Now I really sound like I have a problem. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it was a problem in my life. Um, I would just have to say overall, I don't want to speak about most specifically, but that entire experience just taught me to look after number one. Focus on yourself. You know, yeah, yeah. take care of yourself. And it's hard in hindsight. Well, yeah. well, now now that I'm seeing it from um, afar, it's hard to help someone who doesn't want to be helped. You can't help someone who doesn't want to be helped. But yeah. also, um, just to the people out there who are struggling or suffering in abusive relationships, don't involve other people if you don't have the willpower to leave. Mm. 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 I didn't go out there looking yeah. to help someone. Uh, please, I've got things to do with my time. Yeah. I've got two kids. I had four kids at the time sure. that I was raising in my house. Um, <clears throat> but don't do that. Mm. Because now I think for me, the most important thing, the most significant thing that makes me sad is no longer the individuals involved. Because honestly, they're adults. It's, yeah. If that's what they want for their lives, that's cool. But it's more about the entire nation now deciding in future they're going to drink water and mind their own business, mm. even if someone is being killed. Mm. What about the women who do want to get out? Yeah. So I just urge everyone not to, not to take this experience of having been left with egg in our faces um, and, and, and apply it to every situation where you should be phoning the cops, where you should be telling someone. Yeah. And just treat each experience, each um, encounter as an individual experience. Don't turn your back on what's wrong with this country yeah. completely because mm. of one individual. Don't do that. All right, on to a lighter uh, topic. Let's Ooh, talk about I thought sex, you said baby. this was going to be light. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. Let's talk about sex, baby. Oh, <laughs> yeah, please, let's talk about sex. I remember I was in the car, dude. All right, so, you know, sometimes music stations, they get boring because you hear the same songs. So I'm like, all right, let me try this uh, talk, um, talk radio, see what's going on. Tune into Power FM. I think, I might be wrong, but I think you're on air. And you were talking about sex, and you were going in, <laughs> and I was like, "This is the shit I want to hear." <laughs> hey, they, you did a show like that, man. I did, yeah. I did. Yeah, we had a we had a family dynamics feature. We also had a, a man talk feature. Yeah. And one experience that stands out for me was the day that we had former President Tabumbeki mm. come in as the first major interview on Power. Because, you know, Power launched on his birthday. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> oh, I remember that, yes. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Our MD um, was, uh, I mean, I mean that, that was pretty much his mentor as he is our distant mentor, all of us. Mm. Um, and so... I was wrapping up my sex talk conversation <laughs> and um, <laughs> we were engaging quite in depth yeah, about yeah. anal sex. <laughs> That's yeah, what I was listening. <laughs> about anal sex and how to do it right. <laughs> and then in comes the entourage <laughs> with the former president, Tabo Mbeki. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Well, I just had to carry on. And he looked rather fascinated. Like, um, I yeah. don't know if, you know, he was get really into this conversation. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, things were pretty interesting at that moment. Okay, cool. What, what was, when was your first uh, sexual experience? How old were you? Yo, my first sexual experience. Okay, my first consensual mm. sexual experience was when I was, um, I just, I'd finished matric. I was already in my late teens. Mm. And, uh, so you're a late boomer. I, I am. A, when I said this, mm. Melili and Dube on Powers, I mean on Metro FM, was like, late bloomer. Are you still a baby? <laughs> she dragged me for saying I was a late bloomer. I was a late, my, my friends were having sex at 13. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So for me to have sex at like 19 or 18, that was, that's a big deal, you yeah. know? Um, I waited because I had very communicative parent. Well, my mom specifically is very open about sex. She told me it feels good, but you got to wait, you know, mm. with the right person. So I looked forward to it. I didn't, I wasn't in a rush. But yeah. uh, my first sexual encounter was with my stepdad, unfortunately. Wow. I was nine and uh, he, he molested me. Yeah. When my mother were in the States, his name is uh, Joseph Adams. And uh, my mom left me with him as we think it is acceptable to yeah. be your child with their father. Mm. Um, for two, three days, he held me hostage and he basically sexually abused me. Wow. Yeah. 
and after that, yeah, I just wanted nothing to do with men for a long time. Yeah. But uh, I healed from that, yeah. and I've learned that um, it's not about it's not about genders. It's about people. It's about criminals, which is why I've always um, been against the the hashtag men are trash movement. I've been beaten. I've been sexually abused. I've had everything you can imagine happen to me except death. And I still don't believe all men are trash. Yeah. I mean, you're looking at one right now that's not. <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> I mean, I, I don't know. I mean, judging by this thing you're holding on to, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> wow. Oh, yeah. It must have taken a lot for you to come out like that, you know? Yeah, yeah. So everything you can imagine. Uh, I've experienced mm. and I've not spoken about all of it, but um, I think, you know, when you are a healer, you will experience the most, eh? Because hmm. how else do you get to relate to people's stories? And people don't know why I get it so much. I get it because I've been there, you yeah. know? When I say get out, I'm not just being simplistic about the process of leaving. I know how hard it is. You know, I mean, growing up, I think hip hop fucked me up, you know? Yeah. Because it screwed my perception of women, you know, because you listen to songs like, hey, fuck like this bitch. bitch. Suck my tail. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. But, but now yeah. that I'm older yeah. and wiser, I'm like, geez, woman, it's tough being a woman, dude. Look, it's tough being a woman, but I'll be honest with you, I didn't experience that level of patriarchy until I got to, to Metro FM. Because I, I, I never understood it until I got to mainstream radio. Uh, and that's the only mainstream radio platform that I've been on. Um, and patriarchy is not just about men enforcing themselves. Mm. It is also women who uphold patriarchy. So for those who don't understand what that word means, I'm going to simplify it right here, right now, real quick. Ne? When was the last time you as a woman, and during the funeral, after the funeral, when the food is being served, there's a man in front of you, right? And you're just behind the man with your little plate and whatever. Mm. So he gets given like the, hey, they dish him the meat, y'all. Yeah, yeah. Like every option there is. And then you get there and the woman, the same woman who gave that man a smile and gave him all the meat and all the salads, looks at you and goes, uh-uh, sis, uh, chicken or beef. Hmm. And you're like, but I, but mm. uh, 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 please choose one. But you just gave that guy that's patriarchy. I mean, that is the level of at which patriarchy is entrenched even in our women. So that's what really is more sad about it is that I'm not talking about the men in mainstream radio. I'm also talking about the women. Why is it that we still don't have females who are driving um, the, the, the breakfast shows, for instance? Yeah, I think yeah. I, Anele was probably the first woman to do it when she was at High Felt Radio, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. We can argue about whether you know, other women have gotten opportunities to stand in. You don't even hear a woman standing in on a breakfast show. Hmm. Damn, man. So what do you think your calling is? Because for me, I don't think it's about money or fame. Well, what's your calling? I think if it was about money, I'd have been a billionaire like a long time ago. <laughs> Join the club. <laughs> My calling has cost me money so far, <laughs> if anything. Because, you know, white people are like, eh, maybe not a good investment. Yeah, yeah. She talks too much. She's got too much of an opinion. Mm -hmm. um, I would definitely have to say that my calling is to heal. To heal, ne? It's to heal. So do you think being in the industry is just to get people's attention so you can do Mm -mm. the the, the, the mm -mm. job that you're meant to do mm -mm. I'm doing the job that I'm meant to be doing in the media industry mm. that is what I'm doing mm. if you look at the shows that I've done over yeah. the last like 15 years wow Jesus <laughs> sure. <laughs> it's my a god lot. Yeah. if you look at all of those shows except for the wrestling show mm. um, all of those shows were progressively about healing mm. and personal development. Every single one of them. Yeah. It wasn't a coincidence. I've said no to so many other shows that didn't resonate. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so Even when I was hungry. Yeah. 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 All right. So we're almost about to close this interview. Uh, just in closing, um, I heard a rumor you got a new man in your <laughs> life. <laughs> hey, what's going on? Hey. Wow, guys. You should have told me so I can hand in my CV. <laughs> <laughs> what's going on in your love life at the moment? <laughs> mm? Does it need some flavor? 
Look, I, I don't want to jinx it. Yeah, yeah. I don't want to jinx it. But you are seeing someone. I'm seeing someone. And you're happy. I'm happy. Mm. Okay. Oh, yeah. Break it down. The anal thing. How do you do it properly? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> And then would you ever be in like an open relationship or an open marriage? Yeah. Would you? Yeah, I would. That's crazy. Yeah, I dude. would, I would, I would. I'm actually fascinated by by um So am I. Yeah, those type of situations. I, I recently posted on Facebook a couple that um the wife actually said to the husband, Listen, I, something's not right here with mm. our connection. They've got two kids, they've been married like ten years. I feel like there's something missing mm. and I'm bisexual. So can we include another woman in the equation? And so he agreed and um, she looked for someone and they found someone they both liked wow. and um, they decided to get divorced. So she wouldn't feel like an outsider. Yeah. So the three of them live together. They're raising these children together. These two who used to be married, go out and go work. This new one looks after the kids. If you look at them being interviewed and, you know, just are privy to their conversations, mm. it's such a beautiful thing to see. The kids are aware that they've got two moms. They don't hide it from the children. Yeah. Yes, it is a very unique dynamic. But my thing is that I'd rather be in an honest relationship that's not perfect than be in a perfect relationship that's a lie. Hey, buzz, buzz. Yeah. Hey, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I got a horn. <laughs> Yeah. All right, just in closing, uh, we're going to play a quick game. It's called Story Time, right? Okay. I'm going to give you a celebrity's name and then tell me the first story that comes to your mind mm -hmm. about the celebrity. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, first name is Casta Semenya. Power. Mm. FM. <laughs> <laughs> and if not power, we na. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Have you ever met her? Sorry, is that the whole story? Did I get it right? Yeah, you got is it, it right. one word or a sentence? No, 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 a story. Like, oh, uh, a story. First time you met her. Or... Oh, a story. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. I, I thought you said first word. Ish, no, 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 ish, no, I would have failed time. if that was the test. <laughs> have I met Casta? Or oh, interviewed her? Or... I think I may have met her, and I think I found her in very intimidating. Mm. And I seldom get intimidated by anybody. <laughs> But she, I, I literally, I think I was shaking in my boots she's when I presence, met Castor. Yeah. She's got presence. But also, I picked up a very, um, it might be a defense mechanism, mm. but she, her walls were very high. Oh, I see. But I think it's because of the ongoing bullying and mm. the, you know. She has to protect herself. Inside, I see a really amazing, really soft, really gentle soul. Mm. Uh, but I, I was shit scared of her when I met her. I don't want to lie. Um, Azania? <laughs> Um, have I met her? No, no, no. Do you have a story about her? Yeah. Azania. I was, uh, I was a fan of Azania's when she was at Metro FM and she had a show called, uh, Total Bliss. Yeah. And, and so when I found out that I'd be working with her at Power FM, that was, I mean, for me, that was really incredible. And, um, I never thought that our, our worlds would collide in that way. Yeah. So, so yeah, never imagined it. But, uh, I, when, when I was checking out your interview with her. You guys mentioned you had some differences. What differences were those? No, she mentioned. Oh, yeah, she mentioned. I don't know. You'd have to ask her. Okay. Yeah. Zanya, we'll get you on soon. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Zoto... I need handy. It's spicy. <laughs> Woo! Yeah, 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 yeah. It should be called Podcast and Spice. <laughs> it should be called Podcast and Spice. But, uh, Zoto, um... Zoto Abantu? Hi. Have I ever met Zoto? I feel like I know Zotwa. Don't ne we all feel like we know yeah. Zotwa? Zotwa Bantu. I don't know if I've ever, I don't think I've ever met Zotwa. Yeah. Um, I think I've seen her at the Durban July in, you know, wearing, you know, a very mm. interesting outfit. Um, but my only impression of her is, is that we need people like Zotwa in our society. Yeah. You guys can say what you want about her. Countries can ban her. Um, but every single generation needs, needs that non-conformist mm. to remind us that it's okay to be yourself. Yeah. 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 No matter how radical. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Fat Joe? Uh, Fat Joe. Oh, yes. Fat Joe. So the first time I'm, I think I, I officially got to talk to Fat Joe was when he invited me to his show um, the Fat Joe Show. Was it the Fat Joe Show? On SABC No, one. it was RGB. RGB. It was okay. RGB, yeah. yeah. It was on SABC 1 too. And, um, I was scared because I knew Fat Joe, you know, <laughs> like Hannah the Boundary, 
<laughs> you know, I was terrified because, you know, you know, you know, Fetcho. He likes spice. <laughs> yeah, I know. And I was like, oh, my God. But he actually, he, he. He was not the Fat Joe that I knew. Even oh. people were like, yo, I can peel a shem of Fat Joe. Yes. Yeah. Even my mother was like, I know shem. <laughs> I don't know what got into him, but he was really sweet on the show. He was um, he was not the Fat Joe I was expecting. So oh, nice. Yeah. Uh, lastly, Anati. Anati is a phenomenal um, artist and musician. I respect his work very much. I love his soul. Mm. And uh, I had a, an interesting experience with him on on the drive that was a very spiritual experience that taught me a lot that taught me a lot about um about people in general mm. but also i respect anati the most because as much as people were all anti me yeah because they felt like uh you know it's not okay to ask someone about their spiritual journey. Interestingly enough, it's okay for the men at Metro, I won't mention names, to ask people about their sexual life. Even. But we can't ask people about their spiritual journey. Um, but he was he was totally cool with it. I always check in with, with the people themselves, you know. And he was he was very cool. The next time he saw me, he was also very, very cool. Yeah. Um so it, it it was it's a complex matter in the sense that the person that people are fighting you about or for is totally cool, and then the rest of the people who feel like it was completely inappropriate have just got to yeah. to deal with themselves. Fuck, man, dude! It also taught me that you know some platforms are not for you. Yeah, because had it happened on a different platform, it wouldn't be such a big deal. But it's also about the following as well. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, there's YouTube now, so, you know. Yeah, and it's not the first time, you know, I've been in a situation like that. It's just that I was on that platform, and mm. it's those specific type of listeners, you yeah. know, so it is what it is. Dude, man, like, um, you know, people might not uh, know this, but uh, I had never met you before today. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you're like a beautiful soul. I feel like your story you. hasn't been told and needs to be told. You know, it's important to have people like you. Uh, who stay true and core to themselves, despite everything that's happening. Yeah. It's very hard. Yeah. People don't know what happens in, in the industry, and it's very easy to lose yourself. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, I, 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 I like, fuck, I, I, I love you, man. I adore you. Aw, thank you. Know, you. I think you, you're great. Um, now I get why people, uh, all these <laughs> women are inspired by you. <laughs> it so, all makes so, sense. So, so then what, what, how, why would you say that, all, all the women who say they're inspired by me are inspired by me. I think they see something in you that they can all tap into, but they're just afraid to. Mm. And it's all about taking that leap. Okay. You know? Yeah. I don't know. I could be talking shit. No, no. You're making perfect <laughs> sense. I mean, to me. <laughs> you know? Because it's brave. Like, to be yourself is the hardest thing. It's not easy. It's not Isn't easy. Isn't that the irony, though? Yeah. It's the irony. It's easy to be fake. You know what I'm saying? It's easy Anyone because can... that's what we've been taught. Yes. And you have to realize you have to be okay with yourself to be yourself. Mm. So how many of you are really okay with yourselves Whew. if you're struggling to be yourself? Yeah. You got to get to the point of self-acceptance and self-love that you don't give a damn whether people will love you or not, but mm. you're being true to your higher self. Yep. And trust me, the more real you are with yourself, yeah. the more you'll attract people who are real to you. And the more people will love you for who you are. And the ones that don't love you, that don't like you, it's cool. It's cool. It's okay. Yeah. We it's can't okay. all love each other. No. <laughs> <laughs> but we must all treat each other with yes, respect. Yes. You don't have to like me, but, respect but you must respect me. me. Yeah, I agree. Uh, the Big Secret, Dope Show. Yo. People are loving it, eh? Oh my god. It's coming with fire. <laughs> oh my god. Yo, the big secret is yeah, just yeah. is an incredible show. It was time for the big secret. Yeah. You know, um it's the second season of the show, but now is the most pivotal time for such a show because we're coming out of an era politically, psychologically, uh, from a family structural point of view where we've swept so many things under the carpet that we don't even know how to be real with ourselves. Mm. And there's such a spiritual blockage in South Africa. Mm. And most of it is because of all the garbage mm. that we are holding on to. So yeah. the big secret is definitely the platform where people can, can just release yeah. and let go of the burdens that they've been keeping a secret. Yeah. Mashaba, thank you so much for joining Whoa. me, man. Thank you. So tune into The Big Secret. Yes, do. On Wednesdays at half past nine mm. in the evening, Central African time on BET Channel 129. And what else are you working on? Are you writing a book? Are you going back Yo, to radio? Guys, I'm writing a book. I'm going back to radio. All of the above, just in God's time. Nah.
All right, cool. In God's time, yeah. All right, Master Chava, thank you so much, man. Thank it's you. Been a pleasure. I Did you enjoy it. the interview? I thoroughly enjoyed it. I even need to pee so badly. <laughs> <laughs> Go right ahead. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. This has been Podcast and Chill. <laughs> Podcast and Chill. Matt G, the Ghost Lady, and Len Moleko.